Hey, good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing this evening? All right, cool. Well, welcome once again to Evolve 2016 in beautiful Orlando, Florida. I hope it's been an enjoyable conference so far, and you guys are learning a little bit along the way as well. So to keep the information flowing, uh, we have Martin Van Dyke with Zablu, ha who has traveled all the way from Holland to have a talk with you folks about cross-platform media in Xamarin. So with that, Martin, it's all yours. Thank you, Josh. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, so I'm Martin Van Dijk from the Netherlands. I work for Xablu, and um, I'm going to tell you a thing or two uh, all about media in Xamarin, and especially how you can consume media in a cross-platform manner. So what I'm doing besides that is a lot of open source projects. You might have seen me um, on, for example, GitHub, uh, Twitter. Um, I'm using a lot of MVVM Cross, one of the owners, and I'm gonna tell you how you also can incorporate that into your media apps. So, about my job. I work at Xablu, and what we do is like we do consultancy, co-sourcing, DevOps, everything basically related to Xamarin. Uh, we are Xamarin only house. Uh, and the great thing about my job is that I get lots of time to work on open source projects. So I love that. So my presentation is about media today. And when you think of media, there are three types that pop up in my mind. And that's images, video, and audio. And all those different media formats have different encodings. Uh, you sometimes need to decode it again. And they have different formats. So how do you handle that on mobile devices? Let's start with images. Uh, images can be in all kinds of different formats. You have like uh, bitmaps, uh, GPG, EG, and um, even more, which I even don't know of. But um, to load those, you probably need some things on the different platforms to help you. So for example, on iOS, you have the UI image, where you need to put in your image, and on Android, you have an image view, which takes a bitmap. So how would I solve that problem? Well, luckily, there's a package for that. And the one uh, you might have heard of is Splat. Uh, who's using that already? Yeah, I see some hands. Okay, all right. So it's a really cool package that you can use to consume images on iOS, Android, and Windows. And what you see here is a way to load images from a website or from your disk uh, into the app and also in a cross-platform manner. So you can, for example, from a view model, uh, load in an image to your native platform. And what I want to do is show you how we implemented this in our app. Let me just see how this works here. Did I press the wrong button? There it is. Okay, so I have an app here running and um, let me Come up with the simulator here. This is a media app I've been working on for a customer for some time. And um, what we wanted to do is have the images here with a pop-up um, loaded from the core, uh, the view model. So if I just press here now, we can see that the breakpoint is hit. Let me just step through that. And open this up. So we can see that there's an image in here. Uh, it's uh, 74 by 74. So just continue. And we can see that this image, which is called icon play static, is right here at the queue. The thing is now that we want this cross platform. So let me just open the iOS simulator and do the exact same thing. And you see we have add to queue here. And this has the same 
icon uh, are loaded exactly the same way, but has a different icon. And uh, the thing is that what makes this so beautiful is that you can integrate the native look and feel of the platform. For example, on iOS, you have a different icon than on Android into your app without using multiple lines of code or uh, maybe, for example, uh, yeah, custom implementation per platform. So I think this is really great for images. So the same thing we did with the icons here on the left side. And if I'm just gonna scroll, yeah, I've removed the titles here because, uh, you know, some secret information. So if you are using images in your app, you should probably use Splat. If you want fast images, there's also libraries for that. So for example, you have this FF image loader or uh, the universal uh, loader of um, an open source project. So that was it about images. Um, let's talk a bit about video. When you want to work with video um, on multiple platforms, there's a lot of stuff you need to think of when doing that. Among that is high bandwidth. For example, if you uh, have uh, like a bad internet connection, you're on 3D, 4G probably, um, there's, there's problems with the speed of the internet. Um, subtitles become uh, important when you're not from the US, like me. And audio, of course. And audio can be of a different format uh, inside the video than you might expect. So there's different encodings and decodings going on there. So let's have a look at how I solve this in an app. So here I have the ExoPlayer project. Anybody who heard of that? Yeah, see some hands there, yeah? Okay, so this is a really cool project that Google started up some time ago. And what it actually does, it is um, kind of a support library to play media files on Android. Um, the normal implementation of media on your Android device has some bugs. And yeah, Google saw that too and thought of let's make a, another implementation to fix those problems, especially with all the devices and all the different uh, Android fragmentation going on. So I have this demo running here, and this is actually the full demo of the, the, the ExoPlayer sample written in Java, ported over to C Sharp and Xamarin. Pretty cool, isn't it? So let us just check something here. Um, I'm gonna just start off with some Apple stuff since that's allowed now, like Microsoft embracing all the technologies, so. I guess there's no sound on that. So let's try this one. Wait, here it is. This is the one. So I hear some sound. It's a bit uh, like uh, low, but it's all right. So this is a signal that is working, but it's of course not cool, right? So let's take a look at, for example, MP4. And what you see here is a video streaming live from YouTube with ultra high bandwidth. This is uh, 1080p, I uh, think. And it's a free movie under the common license open project. So. The thing is, 
There's lots of situations you want to handle when, uh, when doing this kind of stuff. So for example, buffering and seeking through your uh, media app. You can see everything is still fluent. So I know this is a really exciting movie, but we're not gonna watch it all. So what you see here are a lot of formats, uh, for example, Dash, Smooth Streaming, HLS. And the problem can be on Android that your hardware doesn't support the encoding or decoding you need for this specific type of uh, stream. So what happens if we use ExoPlayer with something that's not supported? Well, you see there's coming up a nice um, a notification. This is not supported. And, um, it even tries to do software decoding if possible, and if that is not even possible, well, then you get this message. So everything is taken care of for you on Android. On iOS, it's a little bit different, because on iOS, you've got the AV video player, and uh, you're limited to what that one supports. So this was it about video. And what I want to do is go into audio. And we're going to have a deep dive into audio. Um, and I want to tell you how you can play that cross-platform, including notifications, including buffering, that kind of stuff. And I'm going to show you some code about it. So when you think of audio, you have lots of different types. Um, I probably think the first thing that pops into my mind when thinking about mobile apps and audio is like streaming. Spotify, uh, you have like the new ones, uh, Tidal, uh, Wimp, that kind of stuff. Uh, probably everyone has that here, right? Who doesn't have like an app like that? I see no hands. <laughs> Good sign, right? Okay. So we all know what, uh, what I'm talking about. But how do you, ha how do you handle that uh, on these devices? Um, you need to think of, for example, the lower end Android devices. You have the lower end iOS devices too. It's a bit easier because it's not so fragmented. Um, and you also have SD card, local storage, that kind of stuff where you want to use it to play back as well. So let's have a look at how we do this cross-platform. I fear the Scott Hanselman app. This is uh, made by uh, the Xamarin team, uh, by James Montemagno, actually. And um, they made this app for uh, Scott. And it has some nice things. So there's also a thing here called Hansel Minutes. In here you see a couple of talks uh, of uh, Scott Hanselman. And let's take the first one. Hi, this is Scott. I really appreciate our sponsors because they make the show possible. Wow. Today's show is sponsored by Developer Express. That was a bit loud. Become a UI superhero <laughs> with Dev Express controls and libraries. Deliver elegant.net solutions that address I'd like to hear the man, today. but uh, I guess for my talk, you read to listen to me, right? <laughs> so this is, this is pretty good then. This is uh, iOS. I got the same on Android, but my opinion is actually that it's quite bad media player. Sorry about that, James. He's somewhere in there, but um, I, I, f I think like, what you have here is probably not the best user experience you can create for your apps. And I can show you the same on Android. So let me just open my emulator here again. And we have the Android app here. It doesn't seem to play right now, but uh, I'm sure it works. So what am I missing here? And there's quite some pieces, actually. 
Um, you see that the design is just like this two buttons here. It, in my opinion, that should be one where you can toggle. And you're missing next, forward, uh, pause, uh, <laughs> skipping forward in time. And one of the most important things might be the notification bar. There's nothing there. But I talked to James about this, and he's completely agreeing. So we don't have a fight today. The thing is that this is just a demo app uh, made in, uh, in a short period of time. And I really like it, actually, but it's not for this purpose. So I think we can do better than that. And one of the apps I've been working on um, is uh, the open source project that James and I have um, using background streaming audio on Android. So here it is. And this is what a UI might look like of a media player uh, which is implemented properly. But that's personal, maybe. So let's try and uh, start this thing here. Oh, there it goes. Hoping the internet is fast enough to, uh, to buffer a bit here. So what you already see here is that there's a notification. Oh, that was not intended to be there. But what I like to do is uh, go a bit through the code here to see what actually happens. And um, I'm going to open up this app here. And we start off with Android. So what you can see on the top there, let me just scroll a bit, uh, make this bigger. Can you all read it? I hear nothing, so I suppose so. So this is actually a service. And a service is a thing on Android that can run in the background. So when a user um, goes into the background, goes to the lock screen, uh, so the app is actually not in a like active state anymore, the service will still run. And why is this necessary? Well, you don't want that the sound will stop when the user goes to the background, for example. That would be a, a really bad user experience. The thing beneath here you see is the intent filter. And this one makes sure that all the actions coming from your notification, coming from your lock screen, are handled by this class. And I'll, I'm going to show you later on this file where you're going to catch that stuff. So furthermore, I have some interfaces I implement here. And those are all callbacks which are called um, on, for example, seek, prepared, error, all that kind of stuff. So. When I'm using this media app, there's lots of state I need to take care of. And when you um, are using the standard media player in Android, uh, just a regular one, which is provided by the Android system, you will know that the states are not right a lot of times. And I guess that's one of the things uh, of the history of Android that's, yeah, it's been stuck a bit there. So what Google did is they provided us with the Android support packages. Um, so I think they're great. Uh, we'll use the Android support packages here. Yeah, they're really helpful, I guess. That you have like the Compat packages, the V4, which is used in this uh, class here. And what you can do with them is track the state uh, without all those issues. It has backwards compatibility uh, down to Android v4, API level, of course. What I also have is a queue where the list of tracks is. This is just a helper for me where I can uh, see uh, the URL, that kind of stuff. We have file storage. So if files are already buffered or you downloaded it offline, you can find them there.
So let us look at the first real method here where we're gonna play a file. And that's right here. So what the Android support package does for you, it handles uh, not only the state, but also the notifications and the connection to all the different Android systems there are. So you have like Android Car, uh, Android Wear, you have Google TV, you have the Chromecast, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to connect it all by yourself, it would be a big and hard job to do. And Google came up with the support packages to fix this. So what I'm doing here is I'm initializing the player so it can play uh, media and initializing the media session. So this one is interesting and let's go to it. So what you need to do is start up an intent with your, for example, main activity. So the, um, the, the media session compat knows where to go if there's anything, uh, any interaction with your app. It all goes through this intent. And we just saw the intent filter on the top of this class and if there's anything happening, you get the intent filter there, you have the action uh, attached to it, and the intent will fire off in this class. So I'm also setting some flags to handle the buttons. If you have the buttons on the, for example, in your car, you can have these buttons where you can play, pause, where you can see information on your screen, and that's already handled for you by this media session compat. So let's just try and run it to see if it works. I think I hear some sound. Sounds good. We're not gonna dance today, so I'll just pause it. What we're seeing here is that the media notification is already there. It has these buttons, previous, play, next. There's a cover here, the icon of the app is there, and the title. So you don't need to make this whole notification by yourself by implementing an XML layout or uh, creating a custom class. The media session compat handles that for you. And let me just show you the same on iOS. I'm guessing I'm not getting any internet. Oh, there it is. So you see now that the same thing works on Android and iOS. And I'm going to show you the code for iOS 2. So we have it right here. And I'm initializing the player. It's a regular AV player, which is, of course, in the iOS SDK. And after putting in the URL to the player, uh, it's only a matter of saying player.play and iOS will handle it for you. So iOS is actually much easier on this front than Android. It does a lot for you, and uh, yeah, th that's a good thing, of course, but um, if you want to use like the iOS car thing, that might be harder than Android. So what we saw in here is the Android support package V4, and there's a lot of classes in there which I'm not, being, uh, not able to cover all today. But what you see here is the media session compat, the controller, which handles the, 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 um, like all the different components together. Uh, you have the playback state, where you can track your playback. Um, the browser service, this enables you to, for example, search through your files on the device and play them in your app. 
with the notification compat, when you drag down where you have the lock screen, and the media button receiver which channels through the, the actions you do. People spend more time using other apps than yours, unless you're, of course, Facebook. But, yeah, well, I'm not Facebook, so I need to think of a way where I can, like, let the users stay in my app. And how you can do that is by creating beautiful UI, beautiful UX, uh, which people use to like and, 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 you know, they stay in the app, like, for example, Spotify. You really think it's initiative and, um, you know, like, you can, you can easily use it on the way um, when you're on the road. So you really need to think through your app and how the navigation process goes. And I think that users appreciate it when you use standard controls. So when you have your own media app, make sure you're not doing something out of the box and implement your own notification, implement your own, um, you know, like screen layouts. Make sure you stay within all the, well, rules, I would say, non-official rules, of course, to make sure that the users like your app. And one of the things is, for example, on iOS, let me just see if I can drag this up here. Yeah, there it is. You have the controls here. You see the title, you see the artist. Oh, it's there, sorry. So here it is. You see the controls, the title, the artist. And this is what people are used to. They want this control, they want the native layouts, they don't want the everything that's already invented for them. So make sure you're implementing this whenever you create a media app. So how is this notification system done? And um, let me just switch back. So I just showed you the iOS one, and Android has the same, of course, you also saw that. And both has this helper classes. And let me show you the code for that. So what I here have here is a class which receives the state on every change. And by doing that, I can also push out this state to all the different devices I'm connected to. So if I have a Google Watch or a wa Wear Watch, I would have these new icons, the play and pause buttons, the next, and all the information in there without doing anything special to do that. So this is really cool. Uh, I need only to write this code once and it works everywhere. So you might think, is there something like that for iOS 2? There is, but it's a little bit different. So let me just scroll down here. What you can do here is you have this AV metadata item. And this contains the information for your um, for your media item. And by putting in the values of your media, it will also enable you to show this in your car and on your device. So when you have this app, you have the notifications, you have the player running. There are more things you need to think about. And those are, I would say, the states. And you have like Wi-Fi, 3D, 4G. But you have also offline, where you downloaded the file and you're not streaming anymore, but you're playing it from your device. And that might even be in the background. So what I have done for an app is that I've implemented PCL storage, uh, which is available as an open source component, and you download the file, 
and play it instead of your streaming media. But we've seen all those crosses now, and my talk is about cross-platform media. So how can we solve this problem cross-platform? Well, I'm working with MVVM Cross, obviously, and what I think is so great about it is that you can really um, abstract your, your classes. You can abstract, for example, the media implementations for iOS and Android, and you can implement them per platform we solve it with MVVM Cross and play it from one view model. So I've made an interface for my media player called iMedia Player, and it tracks the status it has some events, it has the play, stop, pause, everything in it. So if we go back to, for example, the media player on iOS, you can see that it implements this interface. And the same goes for Android, actually. So this one implements the interface as well. You can see here, for example, play next, uh, that's somewhere here, play next. And if we take a look at the view model now, you can see that we have this iMedia player here, which is resolved by MVVM Cross, so you can uh, play your media files from one location. So, for example, if we want to open a track, this is done here. Uh, I open the current track and play it. It's just one line of code and it will play on both Android and iOS without any changes to your view model. So I think this is really a great way to make your apps cross-platform and share as much code as possible. So what we have here is a file, 212 lines of code, and it's handling everything for you on the player. Uh, and that's on iOS and on Android, and I even have a, a Windows implementation, which I'm not gonna show because it's too buggy. <laughs> so, when you have all this media stuff, you also need to handle um, the, like, for example, a uh, queue with uh, items that you want to play next. And I'm gonna show you that as well. So I'm having a queue here, and there uh, are a couple of properties on it. And the advantage of handling your own queue is that you can really buffer up front, for example. And um, the thing is that you want the app to be fast. Uh, if you're buffering, uh, up front, before the next tra track starts, you see that, well, yeah, the user is satisfied that, that it's really fast. And I think that's the best way to do it because you have, for example, on Android and iOS different implementations of this queue. And by handling it cross-platform, uh, you get a much better code sharing and experience for the user. So much of this is open source and on GitHub. And what I would like you to do is invite you and get along, help with it. Uh, come on Slack, join LinkedIn, follow the influencers on Twitter, and contribute on GitHub. I think when using open source projects, it's the best thing to contribute back so you can help others forward who helped you to build your app. And by doing that, you also, um, yeah, you know, like, you get, you get back from the community, and, and it's really a great feeling, I think. So I want to thank you for listening.
And uh, I have no time for some questions. So you're going to run up? I see a hand there. Android, are you familiar with uh, any libraries that are that could be used to resize or export video? So sorry, am I having a hard time to hear that? Oh, sure. Are you familiar with any libraries on Android that could be used to resize or export video to other formats? Um, I'm not really sure about that. Um, not really. This is more about playing and not exporting. All right, thanks. Would you uh, recommend for Android uh, using the Excel player or the media player for audio? Um, great question, actually, because the Excel player handles far more than you know just just your media. It, it also handles all the the different uh, encodings you have. Um, what you could do is actually combine those two. You have the media session compat, which will also work with Excel player. So I did personally didn't do that yet. But I think it would be a great option to explore. Do any, do any of these support uh, controls for like Google Cast? Sorry? Like Chromecast? Yeah. Right. So, what, sorry, what was the oh. question? <laughs> it, it's a bit hard because the speaker is not turned to me, so I, I can't hear it really good. Do any of these? Uh, have controls to support Google Cast, Chromecast to, to get Chromecast support. Yeah. Okay. So the media session compat and the notification compat, they provide you ways to uh, support Chromecast, and lots of that is already uh, done in there. But if you want like the advanced thing, the next step there, you need to look into the Leanback library. So the Android support Leanback library there is. It's your thing then. Uh, the, f the only downside of that is that it's supported from uh, API level V17 and up. So that's it. Yep. I think there was a question here. Uh, d did you show, or does the library include a way to uh, download and uh, compress or change the size of an image coming from a URL? Yeah, so um, the Splat library does, do uh, down or it does not download the image itself, so you need to create your own web request, download the image, pass in the bytes to it, but as you say, you can uh, downsize or scale the image with Splat. Yeah, so that would probably also save you memory if you are downsizing it. Uh, Spread will take care of that. Any more questions? Um, we've been uh, using Excel Player uh, in our apps, um, but we, to our understanding, it's limited to Android 4.1. Do you have any players on 4.0? Uh, yes. So what you could do is look into VLC. I have a package for that as well. Um, I've not been that active on VLC as I've been on Nexo Player, but um, that supports down to 2.3, if I'm correct. And what you really could do is um, you could look up my code for this, um, this presentation on GitHub. So I'll just show you. Let me switch the screen. So this is my GitHub. And I have here the Xamarin Media Player, or the Media Manager, actually. And what you can do is look up the abstractions, and for example, for the, the iMedia Player, uh, iMedia Manager, and you can implement those with VLC. So when you have VLC, you just say, like, play is a VLC player dot play, which has a string uh, URL as input. So that way, you can uh, switch out those libraries. Any more questions?
I guess not. So I hope everyone enjoyed my talk and follow me on Twitter, get in touch on Slack and uh, I'll be answering your questions there for sure. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Thank you.